kind of got a, a little bit of a different approach to uh, today's content and what we cover, uh, so long as you guys are okay with it. The first thing I want to do is talk command and see if there are any parts of it right now that you have questions about, that you're finding a little finicky, that are operating the way you'd like it to, or you know, think it's operating correctly, then we'll kind of go from there. So what, if anything, uh, regarding the back end of command, do you have any questions about or do you wonder about? It's okay if the answer is no. Yeah, I haven't really been active with this act. That's so okay, I'm... yeah, no worries. Mm -hmm. Let me just do a quick kind of overview then. So we talked about contacts and obviously managing your database. We've gone over how to import and all that fun stuff, all the things you can do within there, setting them up on the neighborhood campaigns and all that jazz. We talked about opportunities and how the pipeline to kind of track your business, your business, your projected GCI. You can now compare yours to other people, et cetera, and top producers. Uh, groups, we've talked a little bit about that and how you can share information. Uh, lead accelerator, that's probably one thing that I could, I could uh, get a little bit more detail on how do we actually run campaign and sync it with all of our systems. We talked about syncing it with social media, but we haven't quite yet uh, done that. Local insights, we know that we can leave local insights. Um, via our app at different places within the area. We already know about the referral network, settings and settings. Sketchhouse, we know this one's still kind of a work in progress. It's designed for flyers and stuff. It's kind of okay, but they're still kind of doing an overhaul on it. Uh, smart plans is yet to come. Listings, I'm gonna dive into this in a little bit just to show you guys uh, the KWLS 2.0 version and familiarize you with it a little bit. Landing pages, we talked about how you can create those and the usefulness behind them. And then we talked about some of the reports this will generate for you in terms of um, uh, your business, et cetera. And then e email campaigns in combination with uh, MailChimp is still a work in progress as well. Pretty soon they're gonna um, make campaigns that have already kind of been built out and mailed to us as well. So when I look at all this, there haven't been any uh, significant changes uh, this week to last week. It's still stuff that they're just continuing to build out. But are there any of these that you are completely unfamiliar with or you'd like to learn more about or us to spend some time on uh, while we're here right now. So on local insights, is that, yeah. is that our job to build that? Yeah, it's a kind of a collective effort. So anybody, anytime an agent uh, and, and soon to be consumers add local insights, it's gonna ping for everybody. So it's either just going to get done without you contributing to it, or you can choose to contribute to it. It's completely up to you. For example, I haven't really spent much time doing local insights, but one reason you might want to is pretty soon when it comes to the referral network, one of the ways they're going to be able to sort who they might refer to is by saying, well, who's given the most local insights in a particular area? And then I choose to refer it to you because in theory, right. Right. Yep. So you can see, you know, we've got a few up there. Uh, so I have done, I did one. I, I went around and I put all, put all the Keller Williams offices up. So this is mine, Zach Duckworth, Keller Williams Premier Realty, you know, right here. Looks like four people have liked it. Somebody put uh, partner's title, somebody put Byron, golf course. Uh, looks like uh, Lori put herself on here. Um, so you can go through and you can add insights. What you kind of need to think of this as is it's kind of like uh, Kelly Williams building our own internal Yelp. If that makes sense. But if we have clients that we work with, let's say they're a painter or an electrician, mm -hmm. it would be to our advantage to put them on here. Yeah, I think so. They're getting free advertising. Yeah, I think so. And it becomes relevant because if you remember, when we build those community pages and stuff, well, one of the options is we want local insights to appear. And so the, the all any insights in our system in that area or nearby will populate there. So this is all, this is pretty informational. Really, this is just marking where stuff is. But really, the kind of insights we're looking for are, you know, beautiful park in this neighborhood to, you know, go, if you turn on this street and blah, 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 blah. Like that, that kind of more relevant, pertinent stuff to people in the area that might be able to, hey, uh, little known uh, phenomenal place in downtown Rochester, you know, park here and ask for so and so. Like, but those are the kind of really cool, super hyper local insights you're looking for. That kind of thing. I mean, any, any work, but throwing something up there, like mine, not a good one, right? You can Google and find this office here. But I just wanted to explore, explore it a little bit, so I decided to do so that. Things you wouldn't ordinarily get yeah. by just looking at neighborhood. Right, right, you know, but or like you might want to mark the golf course 
hey, you know, flag in this golf course, phenomenal place. Uh, hole number seven is amazing. You know, watch how you cut the whatever. You know, stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay. So look, I have something else. One more. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. What are you doing? under contacts? Yep. Why don't they have anniversaries on? You can add wedding that. anniversaries. You can add anniversaries. How do you do that? Well, it's added. It's still in the same way. Because I didn't, I was trying to figure it out. I couldn't, that's okay. Yeah. Do that. So, let me see. I already told that it made it. So, we've got home anniversary, but you want wedding anniversaries. Let me see if I can edit that. Because, I mean, you can look on Facebook regularly and see people's wedding anniversary and put in here and send them something that's pretty offline. <clears throat> so right here where it says custom field, yep. you can add uh, like but I tried that. wedding anniversary All right. and then you would do your input field which would be date. I didn't, do it. I didn't do it because I wanted to update in my system per se. But waiting anniversary and then select the drop down. Oh, you got to do both of those? Yep, and then you would add it. Gotcha. And that will do it for all of them? I mean, then will it be preset or do you have to do it for every particular content? That I don't know. You might have to look at that. I would imagine it's going to preset it for everybody. So okay. if you've got that available to you, that's what you If it doesn't, then it would probably be a phone call or a, a message to support and say, yeah, I would just, I would just make this for everybody versus yeah. individually every time. Okay. okay. So here is what I want to experiment with. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about this, this product or this resource that we pretty much all have available to us called Zoom. And we talked about it kind of from an office management standpoint, but my mind got racing almost immediately on, on how you could use this as a real estate agent in your business. Any of you guys familiar with Zoom at all? Or? I haven't used it, but I've been asked okay. to join Zoom. Have you? Yeah. So have you been on a couple of Zooms or no? I haven't because I haven't been able to log in correctly or the timing at where I'm at just hasn't sure. worked out. But. No worries. So we're going to experiment this. I'm glad you brought your laptop, Cindy, so I'm going to experiment with you a little bit. Because I want to show you guys how this works and how it can apply to your business. And I think I think we're going to start seeing this become a pretty standard and normal practice within real estate. I think if you're one of the first ones to start implementing this, it's going to give you a little bit of a competitive edge. And it's going to make your, running your business a lot easier, right? So uh, just go to Zoom, Google it. I'm going to go to host a meeting because I already have an account. It's going to let me log in and stuff. So bear with me as I do this. Uh, I'm going to do with video on. Make sure my volume is not crazy here. Sign in. This is a completely free service. I've already uh, downloaded the software. You're going to have to do that probably when you do it for the first time. Okay. Well, hello. I'm mm -hmm. on display. So now it's not hosting this, right? Now it's going to want me to, uh, now at this point, I have the ability to invite folks, right? So I'm going to click invite down here. I'm going to invite somebody via uh, email. Actually, I'm going to copy. Well, let me do this. Oops, Gmail. Go into Keller Williams. Cindy, what email do you have open right now? What? Cindy Hughes at. Like this? Yep, yeah, at kw.com. Yeah. So I'm just going to send this to her. She's going to get it via email, and then we're going to see what happens. Going your way. So now in her email, she should be getting a link. Let me know when you've got that. And then we'll have you click that link. Oh, by the way, when I experimented this with myself by myself for the first time, I used my phone. So I was zooming on my phone and a computer. It works great. Even with your smartphone, you can you can do this. It's pretty remarkable. It's very easy to do. Okay, so I got it. So you got it? So click that link for me. You might have to download some stuff, so if you have to do that, just let me know. Oh, 
by the way, you can do this with your virtual assistant. Okay, so which one I want to do? What's the difference between this and Skype? Uh, this is much better, and I'll show you why. Okay. In my just in my personal opinion. Okay. okay. Let's see if that works for the volume. Sometimes you have to figure out volume stuff. Okay, so right now, what I, what's, oops. Um, so what Cindy sees on her screen, what's big on her screen is my camera. Let's see if you get that volume, great. And then what's big on my screen is her camera. So watch, I'm gonna I'll lower it a little bit so I can see the Cindy, right? And then on her computer, she sees me uh, pretty clearly, right? So to your point, it's similar to Skype, but here's where it's it's different. First off, we can have a lot of people in the mix, and uh, secondly, we're going to go through two things. So it's got uh, who my participants are. I can record this, by the way, so that I can save it for later or share it with others, so they can access it at any time. Or I can say, hey, everybody, here's a copy of our meeting. If you need to reference anything that we talked about, I can continue to invite folks. And continue to share it. Now, here's what's cool. So I click share. I'm going to mute myself so that I'm not getting this one. Can't mute myself on that. Um, now it's asking me. Hang on, I'm trying to figure out how to mute myself. Okay. So it's asking me, what do I want to share? Do I want to share my screen, uh, etc. Let me try this. So Cindy, what do you see? Do you still see me on your screen? Yes, just okay. similar to what you're doing, exactly what they have up there. It's just me or is it my desktop? It's, it's my face. It's your desktop and face. It's exactly what's up there is what I'm seeing on my screen. So, okay, so this is what you're seeing now. Yeah. So she now she's able to see what I'm doing on my computer mm -hmm. in addition to me having a conversation. So this is where it might be helpful. You could be talking with a client or somebody and trying to show them uh, stuff. Yeah, absolutely, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So you can you can have a buyer consultation, or you can even do a listing consultation, or or something, whatever it is, uh, via this program with your client. Or let's say they're having trouble. Well, hey, you know, you sent it to me to sign electronically, but I can't figure it out. Hey, hey, here's the deal. Let, let's do a Zoom real quick. Let me get on with you. I'll show you exactly how to do it on my computer. Or better yet, show me your screen so I can talk you through it. Right. Just what did you click to get there? Let me shut it down. Now I went to share and then screen. Yep, before it was. So now I'll do, let me go to whiteboard. So now this is what you see, right? So what I can do is we can illustrate things or, you know, it's not necessarily the most applicable, um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a useful tool for you that you can utilize to help you communicate or illustrate a point, no pun intended, for folks that you're, you're having a conversation with, right? Um, let me see what else we've got. Uh, you can do your phone. And this just brings me back to Oops, hang on a second. Back to my screen. And this I can I can minimize myself. I can see multiple people. Just Cindy, I can get rid of it all together. Um, Another area that you could use this in is if you have an out of town buyer, absolutely, and they can't be at an inspection. You know, you can go in there with this and tape the inspection, and they can see it live. But then they also can tape it, so they can refer back to it. Um, and not only that, but really, it's 
it gives you a chance to have a meeting with anybody pretty much at any time. Because sometimes, too, you might be going through, uh, you might be trying to explain something difficult or complex and special. So, hey, here's your deal. If you have time, can we zoom real quick? We can pop it up and you can just have that quick face to face conversation and explain things and pull some stuff up. Well, here's the deal. Let me pull up a copy of that inspection report. So now you're having a conversation with them and you've got the report pulled up on your desktop and you're scrolling through it as you're talking. Hey, so look at this item right here. Can you imagine the level of clarity you can you can have with some folks on some of the more complex uh, pieces of the transaction that we're trying to go through? Right? And oh, by the way, can you do this with other agents? You do it with anybody, right? What I want you to understand is this is actually a, it's a very, very useful tool that you can use almost immediately. Let me give you another example. Let's say I, I got a random phone call, sign call, internet lead or something, and I have somebody on the phone and I, I want to convert them as a client. Let's let's say it's you, Clark. So I call you, Clark, this is Zach over at Tony Williams. Thanks for registering on my site. Take a look at homes. Just order, you know, what is it that you're looking for in property? And I give you some information. But here's the deal, I've got this, this great um, feature that lets you search for homes almost real time and get uh, information fairly quickly. As a matter of fact, if you're available, I can show it to you right now if you click on the link I sent you. I know it sounds crazy, but there are agents that are using this at a high level to immediately get in front of people and start showing them how they can use their website and stuff to search for properties, get it sent to them automatically, and then use it as a way to either book an appointment or begin to convert them into a client. Something you can do fairly easily, it's free, and, and it's pretty quick. Any, any other questions on this? The, what, the reason why I like it better than Skype is I can get a bunch of people on here, I can do some of the more, uh, I can demonstrate things, I can show them my desktop, you can screen share, because Cindy, she can screen share with me too. Uh, it just makes life a lot easier when we're trying to you know, figure things out. I can record it, which is great. Um, let's say I'm somebody that's kind of paranoid, and we're going over agency, I could record the meeting and save it so that if anybody ever want to come back and say, well, that was never explained to me, well, as a matter of fact, I've got, I got a, a meeting that we had recorded, so I know for a fact we're over it, I can show you that we did. Can you pull up an already pre-recorded video? Yeah, yeah, you would just play it on your desktop. So, you do that? yeah, let me go to, like I can go, I'll use YouTube as an example. So Cindy, this is playing on your desktop right now, right? The video is not, you're not seeing this anymore? No. Were you, were you before though? Uh, I was seeing everything. Oh, hang on, I, I changed my setting, that's fine. Okay, now I am. Now you do? So if I have a video, I can just play it on my desktop view and then she's gonna see the video as well. Yes, your recorded meetings or whatever, do they save in Zoom or do you save them to your? Uh, I think they saved to the desktop. I'd have to play around with that to double check. Yep. Uh, there's a chat feature too. So if while somebody's presenting, you want to message the entire group or somebody individually, you have the ability to do that. It's in that just set one. I don't know if it popped up on your screen or not. It did not. Okay. Here's where you go to record. Stop recording so that we have a thing. A plugin is required. So you can share directly to your phone if you have it connected. I don't have mine connected, obviously. So is there a Zoom app you can have your phone then? Uh, yes. So let me do this. Somebody 
go to war up there? Oh, you're right. Anyway. Uh, let's see here. So, Clark, I want you to open this one on your phone. What email address would you like to send to? It's Clark. Tim Clark. So I just sent it to you. Let me know when you get it. This is kind of cool too. So even I don't have to go to whiteboard to be able to annotate and show things like if I'm on a like let's say I had a form pulled up, right? And I want to say, and right here you can see the difference in agency relationships. And I really want to shine a uh, uh, spotlight on. Oops, but you have the ability to actually real time mark and show on your desktop as you're sharing it different things. You have the ability to slow down these videos so they're not running as fast. What do you speed them up? Like the ones that we're recording? Yeah, let's say you pull a video up. Like one of these? Yeah. Can you like slow it down in a slow motion and then speed it up? Or is it have to play in real time all the time? I think it's real time. Like uh, unless the video has the option for me to slow it down or speed it up itself, then, then it's real time. So join the meeting? Yep. Did you click the link? I have to get the app. Let's, let's try that. I'm sorry, I thought it would take you automatically to the app store to download it. You can save, like you can do screen grabs from the video. If you want to, like if somebody's sharing something, I love that feature. Steal it and just click save. Okay. Right, I'm Zoom, start a meeting, start a join a meeting, join a join a meeting. Join a join. Might ask you for the meeting ID. Meeting ID. So uh, you should have that in the email, but I'll pull it up over here too for you to see. Meeting ID is two three zero three four zero zero two six. Two three zero three four zero 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 two six. Zero zero two six. Leave meeting. This meeting ID is not valid for second time. Try again. So two three zero two three zero three four zero. Zero two six. Zero two six. All right. Zoom would like to carry out the camera. Yes. Yes. Clark's iPhone with a sucker in his mouth and everything. <laughs> um, so again, pretty cool feature. Uh, here's the deal, guys. This is the first time you're using it, and look how easy it was to figure out. That's what I love about this. It's very user friendly, right? Uh, so you can add, or let's say you've got a, a husband, wife, or you know, you're trying, you're trying to get a conversation. You guys are all spread out. You can bring people together, or two of you can be in person. You bring one person in. Uh, it's going to allow you to take your customer service to a whole new level and be able to overcome some obstacles, which are, oh, well, you know, uh, my husband, he's, he's out of town for, for travel. We'll try to talk to this inspection piece. Great. Here's the deal. Uh, I'm going to send you both a link. Click on it. We'll all get together on a conference call in person. I can go through the report with you, right? There, she can be in, in state, he can be out of state, you can be at home, however it is that you want to do it. Um, it's going to give you the ability to work through that stuff. Um, and here's here's what I particularly like about it. If you do this, if you start using this tool, even just every now and then, you're going to separate yourself 
from rest of agents who aren't using it. Imagine what clients are going to say about you and your customer service and your level of professionalism and utilization of technology if you're using this in conjunction with them. I mean, it's gonna say, if, if somebody were, to, if, if my accountant said, hey, here's a deal, we're gonna go through your paperwork, we're gonna Zoom real quick, I'm gonna go through it. Actually, if my accountant does do this, he shares a screen with me, he goes through things, he shows me all this, it's, it's a completely different experience than if you were just to send me an email or call me over the phone and kind of try to walk and talk me through it, right? Now, it's not necessarily um, required, like you might do this as an extra step to deliver that extra piece of customer service, but I would I would tell you to experiment with it a little bit and give it a shot. Uh, and sometimes it's easier to have those conversations when there is a degree of face to face, and not necessarily just over the phone or just texting. Right? Um, I think it's really going to help you know everybody step up a notch in terms of how they're running their business. Other questions or thoughts on this? I got too loud. This phone might pick me up too. Nothing? We good? Kind of useful, not really. I'm going to shut it down up here. I'm just going to end with it. In the draw. And now, Here's your, your question. It's asking about the reporting because I reported a portion of it. So it immediately tells me where do you want to save it? And then I would save it on my desktop to answer your question, not in terms of Intel. I was experimenting with it back in April as well. So let's take a look at that. You know, I was thinking <clears throat> you could use it with that flyer from uh, AW uh, Mortgage for Zero Plus. Yeah. You literally could be talking to your people and talking to them about all the advantages of. And here's the portion that I recorded. Yeah, it's too easy. Here we are doing our thing. It's pretty slick. You, you could send it to them ahead of time, too, because they've already got the documents. And you can say, hey, guys, I'm pulling up a copy of the documents I've already sent you, so you can be looking at them while I'm going over them as well on your end. I've also got it displaying on my screen. And as soon as we're done, since you've already got them, you can just click the sign. You know, but right? can they sign? Can they pull it up on their end, and then I'm walking them through on yeah. the computer? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Because they can share their desktop screen with you as right. well, right. which right. is what makes it such a cool tool, okay. is that it's, it's, it's dual, right? And if you need to ask, so like we could jump from my screen to their screen to the lender's screen if he wants to go over some estimates and stuff like that. Um, at, 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 at which point, I think you, you've just taken the entire experience and customer service level 
through the roof, right? Because some of the biggest complaints we get is people don't understand things, lack of communication, they just weren't clear about some stuff, even if you maybe have gone over it, right? Or, or that there's miscommunication, we're not all on the same page, but great, let's avoid that. We're gonna schedule a quick 10, 15 minute sync. Uh, now that we're gonna make an offer, it's you, me, and your lender, we're gonna get together, quick, have a quick conversation, so we're all on the same page before we draft your purchase agreement, right? And how cool would that be? I like that. How cool would that be, right? If you just make that your standard procedure. Hey, and before we make an offer, we're actually gonna to come together. We're gonna to quick call you, me, and your lender just to hash out a few things, make sure we're all on the same page, and then we're gonna draft and get submitted for you to answer any final questions you might have. And that's that's unreal. Um, and it's it's so easy to do. And if they can do it, it's not like they have to be at home. And you can do it from anywhere. Hey, I've got I got carved out 20 minutes to step out real quick, pull this up, we're having our conversation. Anybody have any last minute questions? All right, sounds good. I'll get the paperwork drafted and over to you in the morning. Any other thoughts or questions? That's cool because there's so many times that I've bought a house and I've never even seen my lender. I right. have no idea who they yeah. are. So. Make them work. <laughs> I think it's important because uh, a lot of times that's one of the biggest disconnects because we've all been there where they say, great, how much are we asking for in closing time? Mark goes, I don't know. 3% of the agents like, yeah, 3% sounds good. But nobody talks to the lender. Because if you're buying a four hundred thousand dollar property and you ask for three percent closing costs, because that's the maximum you can ask for, how much money is that? Probably more than what you need in closing costs, right? So what's going to happen is you ask for three percent, you're going to leave three grand on the table because you couldn't use all of it. Where if you had caused if you had called a lender, he would have said, "Hey, three percent is actually too much." So instead, let's do this. Let's ask for the ten thousand that we need, and let's just reduce our offer price by the extra three grand that we wouldn't be able to exhaust. Great. Now I'm not now I'm not letting my client leave three grand on the table that the seller was willing to negotiate, right? But you sometimes you don't. Know, first off, if you're an agent that doesn't know to ask those questions, it might fall off by the wayside. Or if your lender is lazy, and a lot of times they are, they say, "Oh, the maximum you can ask for is three percent, or the maximum you can ask for is four percent." I say, "Great." I'm not asking you what the maximum is. I'm asking you based on this home and based on this price point, what should we be asking for in terms of closing costs? So I've seen it happen before where we get to a point where, you know, there's money on the table that they're not able to utilize and exhaust. Does everybody understand what I mean when I say that? Like, yeah, there's an extra two grand here, but we've run out of things to spend it on from a closing cost standpoint. So where does it go then? The seller just keeps it. And that's money they're willing to give away. So that's a that's a fail. Right for our buyer clients, a win for the seller. Don't get me wrong. So if I could figure out on the front end what that, what a closer and more exact number is, I'll do that, and then I'll just I'll take the other portion of it off the actual sale price because then I'm not losing it anymore. Right. Um, it's same with percentage down. Sometimes I ask client, great. And so what type of financing? Hey, Mitch, okay, great. How much percent down? Well, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Well, we got we have to have a conversation with your lender. We need to know how much you're putting down to close the cost. You know what a feasible close date is, right? So for me, I'm going to have a little bit more of a warm and fuzzy if I get everybody on the phone and I hear some of it directly from the lender, and the lender is the one communicating it because now it's I don't want any confusion between me and the lender in the eyes of the client. I didn't tell you, you know, what you should be asking for in terms of your closing costs. That came from your lender, right? Uh, and I didn't tell you what type of financing or how much necessarily to put down. That came from a conversation between you and your lender, right? Because that's their area of expertise. So if I get all of us on the same page in one area uh, or one phone call, then I can much easier uh, illustrate that for everybody. Picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. Uh, if there's no other questions, that's that's kind of the, the one new tool I wanted to introduce folks to. I didn't want to get too carried away because it's, I mean, it's pretty new, but I would say start experimenting with it. Um, and you might not use it right away because it is, it is a, kind of a bigger change. You might not necessarily need to use it, but something's going to happen where you're going to need to do something remotely and you're going to remember, oh yeah, what's, what's the name of that thing that Zach showed us? Zoom, go use it, check it out. It's pretty cool. Nothing else for me? All right, that's all I've got. Thank you. Where are those going to come back? I don't know, to be honest with you.